Hi folks, welcome to this screencast on uh, vector projection and model fitting in R. And I just want to run through a few examples with you, show you how to solve these problems using the computer. So uh, the first problem is going to be this one. Um, basically, you have two vectors that you can use to walk around. And since the vectors have three elements, you should think of a three-dimensional space. You're given two vectors. You'd like to know if you can reach this target vector. It's likely you're not going to be able to um, because it takes three vectors to span a three-dimensional space. You only have two. So unless you get really lucky, you're not going to be able to get this vector. So the question you're asking is, how many steps of each vector should you take? In other words, what are x1 and x2 to get you as close as possible to this target vector? So here's how we do this in R. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is enter in these two vectors that I get to use to walk around. Um, I'll give the first one the name u. And to create a vector, I use the c command for concatenate. So there's the first vector. And the second one I'll call v. And uh, this one is 3, 1, minus 4. And then it's often convenient to create a matrix out of these two vectors. And we do this using the mat command. And this is a little funny, but you put a tilde because there's nothing, uh, nothing goes before the tilde, but the matrix depends on u and v. Okay, so we want a matrix whose columns are u and v. That's what this notation means. I'll give that matrix a name. Let's call it A. Okay, now um, I've got to enter in this vector, the one, the target vector that I would like to actually try to reach. So I'm going to say target vector B equals C uh, 7 to minus 4. All right, now in order to, uh, to solve this problem, we use a command called project. This means carry out the vector projection. So what you do is you say project, and you say the target vector, and then tilde, and then the matrix that contains the um, that contains the vectors you would like to use to walk around, okay, to try to reach that target. And what this is going to do, what this command will find for you, is the values x1 and x2. It's actually going to save them in a vector, a vector that has two elements. The two elements will be x1 and x2. So let me just call the output of this x. Okay. If I want to see what was found, I can say x. And it tells me that the value x that corresponds to the u vector is 1.083. So take 1.083 steps of this vector and 1.416. That means take 1.416 steps of this vector and we'll get as close as possible to this vector. So these x contains these coefficients of best fit. If we actually would like to know the vector projection, in other words, the vector that we reached, what we have to do is actually carry out this linear combination, right? Take that many steps of this vector and this many steps of this vector. You know that a way to take a linear combination is to multiply a matrix, namely the matrix A containing these two vectors. You could multiply that matrix by the vector containing these coefficients. So I want to multiply the matrix a by the vector x, and the notation that we use um, is called, uh, in, no, R, in R, the notation that we use looks like um, not just times for multiplication, but it has percentages before it. This means basically matrix vector multiplication. And I want to give this thing a name, uh, I'll call it b hat to distinguish it from b. Right? b is the target, b hat is the place we were actually able to get to. We can look at what b hat is, and of course it's not equal to the target, but it's as close as we could get. We can also calculate the residual vector, I'll call it r. r is the difference between the target vector and where we actually got to, right? The difference between the target and the projection. So there's the residual vector. And if we would like to know the uh, length of the residual vector, we take the dot product of that vector with itself, and we take the square root, and that's the length of the residual vector. Okay, so that's an example of a uh, very straightforward uh, model fitting problem in R. If we want to verify that we did it correctly, we can make sure that the residual vector is perpendicular or orthogonal to the vectors that we were projecting onto, right? Um, so let's go ahead and take the dot product of the residual vector with u. And we get a number that's something times 10 to the minus 16th. That's essentially zero. That's the computer's way of telling you zero. Um, 
And so uh, we can conclude that those two things are perpendicular. We can also check with V, and indeed those two things are perpendicular, so success. All right, next problem is this one that I'd like to show you here. Um, suppose you have these data points, 0, 6, 1, 5, 2, 2, and 3, 12, and you would like to fit them to this quadratic function, okay? C0 plus C1x plus C2x squared is equal to y. Well, the first thing you do is you take that data and you start plugging it into your model, right? And you get these equations here. On the, you have uh, 6 equals C0 plus C1 times 0 plus C2 times 0 squared and so on. You just plug in every point. And then you say, oh, I can you know, use linear algebra to write this. Um, I have a vector 6, 5, 2, 12, and it equals C0 times a column of 1s plus C1 times the column 0, 1, 2, 3, which happen to be the x values, plus C2 times uh, 0 squared, 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, that's 0, 1, 4, 9, the squares of the x values. Okay? And you would like to go ahead and try to find the best fit values for C0, C1, and C2. So let's see how we might go ahead and do this in R. Um, we can go ahead and enter uh, those x values. Maybe I'll call them in a vector called v1. Uh, it's c, 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay. One thing you can notice is if you say v1 squared, you get the squares of those values. So I can create a new vector, v2, which is just v1 squared. Okay. Then I want to go ahead and create a matrix um, corresponding to these three vectors, right? I want this matrix here. The first column is a column of ones. Well, there's a quick way to do that in R. To get the column of ones, here's what we do. I'm gonna say A equals mat tilde, and to get the column of ones, I just write the number one, then plus V1 plus V2. So what this will create, we can type A to see it, is a matrix where the first column is all ones, then we see those x values, then we see the squares of those x values. The next thing I need to do is create my target vector. Uh, the target vector here was 6, 5, 2, 12. So I'll enter that. 6, 5, 2, 12. Um, and the next thing that we need to do is carry out the projection. So uh, we want to project the target vector onto that matrix, and I'll call the output of that C. C is what will contain the best fit coefficients. There's the values we found. C0 should be 6.75, C1 should be minus 6.75, and C2 should be 2.75. Um, if we'd like, we can see what data is predicted by the model. That's equivalent to calculating the projection. And to get that, as before, I take the matrix and I multiply it by the vector of best fit values. We could call that, you know, c hat or something like this, okay? And we can look at those values. If we want, we can even make plots of these things, okay? So I could plot points, the original data. So the original y values were stored in the target vector. The original x values were stored in v1. So let's plot points. And I see this vector, uh, or this plot here, rather. It has one, two, three, four points. We're looking for the parabola of best fit. That's what we found. If we would like to um, plot that, then we would like to plot um, the output of our model, the predicted values. That's what I called uh, A times C, right? That's the, uh, that's the actual projection. And the uh, independent variable is still the values of x that are stored in V1. We'd like to add that to the current plot, and to distinguish it, let's make the color red, and we'll take a look at what we have. Okay, and you can see we have this. Um, if that's not even sat that satisfying to you, and you actually want to plot the function itself, you can go ahead and do that too. If you recall the values of C, what this really is, um, is the function 6.75, minus 6.75x plus 2.75 times x squared as a function of x. We would like to add that uh, to the current plot, and let's add it in red. And you'll see that this function actually will pass through these red points, as it has to. Those are four specific points predicted by our function. Um, 
So we end up getting that curve there. That's the model. That's the predicted parabola. That's the best fit parabola to these four points. Um, we can also compute the residual vector. So to get the residual vector, um, it's equal to the difference between the target vector and the actual vector projection that we computed. So that was this. There's the residual vector. Um, we can try to find the length of the residual vector. That's the square root of the dot product of r with itself. And we can verify that the residual vector is perpendicular to the vectors that we projected onto. So, you know, we can do things like dot r with uh, v1, and that's 0. And we can dot r with v2, and that's 0. We can also take r dotted with the column of 1s. Um, we haven't created that column of 1s as its own freestanding vector. We kind of use the shorthand to do that for the vector projection, but let's create that vector now. I'll call it 1s equals c1111. Um, and we can take dot of r with 1s, and we get 0 also. So everything works out as it should. I guess I'd like to just wrap up by saying you can watch me do those exa these examples as much as you want, and that might be a little bit helpful. The thing that's going to be even more helpful is if you actually sit down and put some time into running through the examples yourself. All right. Thanks for listening.